Hello everyone, we will continue the topic background jobs and in the previous videos, yes, we run the job immediately, we run the job on specific date and time. Now we will go for further investigation on the same. Now the question is in everyone's mind. Suppose I will go for the program for which program we scheduled the background job. Suppose I am running the program. I am running the program in the foreground. If I am running the program in the foreground, I have an option to give the input. Suppose I am giving the input 1, 2, 3 and I am able to see the result. Now the question is in everyone's mind. Yes. If I want to run a background job for a particular input, how I can do that? Because in background job, it will run at its own at that particular time. So how you will give the input there? You will not interact with the background job to give the input at that point of time because it will run at that time by its own. So now the question is, yes, how we can run a background job with specific set of inputs? And in real projects, yes, we have so many background jobs which runs for the particular set of input only. So in that case, how, how we can do that particular thing? Now, if someone asks you, how you can run a background job for a particular input only? The simple answer is we can go for a creation of variant in that case. We need to create a variant. After creation of the variant, we will pass the variant in the background job. And yes, that particular background job will run for that particular set of input only. Now we will firstly learn what is variant, how to create a variant, then how we can use in the background job. And very useful thing, it will save your time a lot. Suppose I will go for the program. This is our program. I am running the program. Suppose Every time I'm giving the input to the program and I'm executing and the output is coming. Now in real projects, how we save our time? Suppose I'm giving the input one to five. What I will do? I will click on to save button. But what the save button is save as variant. Now just see here as of now, you are only only able to see execute button. Once I will create a variant, I will be able to see one more extra button here. Suppose for order number one to five, I'm going for save button. I'm saving as a variant. Suppose my name of the variant is ORD1. Suppose. I will give the short description. Suppose variant one. I will go for save. Now you can see we are able to see one extra button here get variant. Suppose I am running the program. Now I want to run the program for order number one to five. There is no need to give the input. Just simply click on to this button, get variant. Select your variant. Have you seen one to five automatically coming? In real projects, it is very useful because we have so many big programs in the project where we have so many input fields. So you will, you will spend so much time on passing the input to those fields. So what is the best option? Save that as a variant and simply, simply choose the variant. So it will save you a time. Suppose 
I will create another variant. Suppose order number one, two, three. I will go for save. Suppose name of the variant is ORD2. Very useful concept from the project perspective. I will go for save. So I created two variants. Suppose if I want to go run my program for order number one, two, five. I will choose first variant. Suppose I want to run my program for order number one, two, three. I will choose the second variant. Now we created two variants for this particular program. Suppose I want to go for a background job in which we want to go for a background job for order number one, two, five. We want a background job for order number one, two, three. So we will simply, simply use those variants there. So what I will do, I will go to SN36 transaction code. We will give some name to the background job. Suppose I'm saying PG job underscore three. Suppose I will take it as a high priority job. I will go for save. So previously we gave the program name and language and at that time our background job run for all because we have not given any input. So it displayed all the records. Suppose this background job we only want to go for order number one to five. Then we will choose which variant ORD1. You can see both variants are there. We'll go for save. I will go to back button. Now we are able to see the message. It means our job is scheduled. I will go to SN37 transaction code. I will check. You suppose there are so many jobs. I will push the dedicated name. So I am putting the dedicated name itself. Now the job is in scheduled status. Now we will provide the start condition. I will go for immediate. Yes, because I so that I can show you the output at this point of time itself. So I will go for immediate. I will go for save. Now, as of now, job is not released. If I will check you can see job is still still scheduled. You need to go for save. Now you can see if I will refresh job finished. We are not able to see the released status. Yes, because we run immediately. So after released status changed to finished because the background job finished. Now if I will show you the spool itself you will be able to see the output for order number one to five. Order number one to five. Suppose I will go for variant two. Suppose I will schedule a background job. I will go for another background job. Suppose I will take the priority as A only. I will go for step. This time I will choose variant 2. Suppose variant 2 is what? ORD2. I will go for save. I will go for back. As of now, we have not got the message. Once I will get a message, now the job is scheduled. So I will go for BG job underscore 4. I will go for execute. Now you can see the status is scheduled as of now. I will run this also on immediate basis. I will go for image. You can go for specific date or time also. I will go for save. Now the status has not changed to released. Once I will save then it will be released. 
status is released. Job run and now we have finished. If I will check the log now. Now you can see, sorry, if I, you can check the job log through this job log button. If I will check the spool now, if I will go for spool, you can see we have order number one, two, three, only four and five did not come because this background job took one, two, three as a input. It did not take one to five, nothing. So this is the way how you can run a background job. Yes, with the specific input. Now we will cover one more thing also into this particular video. Many people ask, yes, whatever the spool is generating, can we send a mail of the spool to the user? Yes, this is a possibility. Yes. Because background job is running in the background. If we want to send the output through mail to some user, there's a facility here itself. Suppose I will go to SN36 transaction code. I will give some name to the background job. Suppose I'm saying BG job underscore five. Have you seen? We have an option here, spool list part recipient, click here. Now, as of now, I will go for simply, simply internal user only because we do not have external email addresses. Internal user means within SAP itself. As of now, we do not have any external recipient. So I will show you within SAP itself. Suppose I will send the spool to my email address itself. Suppose I will put the recipient as my email address. I will put R Mehta. This is my SAP login ID. Copy. Now we will go for save. This is the program name. Suppose we will go for second variant will go for save. I will go for back. Now the status is scheduled. If I will show you in SN37. Status is scheduled. Suppose we will run on immediate. Start condition immediate. Save. As of now, it is not released. Once I will go for save. Now it is released. Refresh. If I will show you again. I will go to SM37. I'll put the name BG job underscore five. Now you can see we are able to see finished. We can check the spool. One, two, three. Now I can check this in my inbox also. Now in SAP, how I can check my inbox? There is a transaction code SBWP. The full form is business workplace, SAP business workplace. So you can check your inbox through this particular transaction code, SAP business workplace. So I will go for this transaction code. And I, the same spool will be in my inbox. You can see business workplace. If I will go for my inbox, if I will double click. Now, this is background job five, BG job five. If I will double click, 
you can see we are able to see same to same spool if i will click here same to same spool in my box and this is the way how we can send a spool output to recipient email address also so what is the summary of the video in this video we cover two points what is first point how you can schedule a background job for a particular set of input data in that case you need to create variants create the variants for your program and use in the background jobs second how you can send a output of background job to recipient email address you can click on to spool recipient you can pass the email address once the background job will run yes the output of the background job or you can say spool will be sent to the recipient email address so that's it in this particular video thank you